Now let's have a look at MATLAB. I've opened it up and usually you will have this default layout here. Actually you can change it to whatever you, you feel like it, but the default one gives you right here in the middle the so-called command window, uh, the folder you're in, the files in the folder if there are any, and you can have a couple of details on those files, and a column for the workspace. Okay, so everything here can be changed according to your taste. Now let's start with the command window. Here you can basically s type in your commands and, uh, and MATLAB will give you the results. Okay, so 1 plus 1, or you can compute the square root of 4, uh, and it will give you an answer. You can also assign variables, and you can see that this variable x got assigned in the workspace here. You can have a look at this variable by double clicking and then you can see that this is a double so MATLAB distinguishes between different types um, of uh, numbers and maybe also text also known as strings etc. So you can even change it here so this looks a bit like Excel. Alright but most of the times we will manipulate variables so we will say y is equals 2 times x. Okay. Now, if I had a cool command that I want to use, I can simply use the up and down arrows to scroll through my recent command history, okay? Which is quite neat. Y you can even say start typing a command and then use the up and down arrows to see which sorts of commands you ran. Okay, now let's clear the command screen, CLC. And let's quickly go through the preferences together. Okay, there are a couple of preferences, at least I like to change. So what I like to do is, of course, uh, change, first of all, uh, MATLAB's uh, coloring scheme. And uh, if I'm editing certain text files with a certain file type ending. And since we will use Dynair, I also added the MOD extension, okay? and the INC extension because I like to use uh, to name my text files with MOD for Dynair and INC to include something as well. Now I also don't like to have those backup files because I have different ways to backup my, my code. Also I disable the source control because I use a different program to do source control. Uh, if you are on Linux you should probably ch have a look at the shortcuts what is the active settings and change that, that maybe back to Windows. Um, otherwise it's Emacs style. Okay, so again those are the settings. More or less you can simply stick to the defaults. Um, maybe you want to change the fonts. Okay, now typing in the command line is uh, one way to interact with MATLAB. But actually for replicability and for what we want to do is we were going to create text files. We will simply write program code, so we will create so-called scripts. And MATLAB actually has two different kinds of scripts. A live script where you also get a sort of nice way of uh, the displaying your results in just one file, which can then be exported as a PDF or an HTML file, etc. We will stick to the basics and simply open the editor by clicking new and this opens up a new script file. Now here I can basically type in what I want to do. Okay, so I might want to compute one plus the square root of five divided by two. So if I want to execute this command, I simply select it, right click and you can see evaluate selection in the command window. Okay, so on Mac, the shortcut for this is Shift F7. On Windows and Linux, it is usually F9. But you can change the, that shortcut, whatever you want. So and this will send whatever I've selected to the command window, and it will display the result. So programming is about creating variables. So I might create a variable, let's call this x. x should be equal to a vector. And I create vectors. Uh, with using square brackets. So one, two, three. Put in a sem semicolon. Let's run this. And nothing is displayed here because the semicolon suppresses output. Okay, if I want to have a look at x, I need to simply run x. 
either in my script or in my command window and I can see this is a row vector now. Or I can write display x. Okay, so let's evaluate the whole section and you can see my answer and my vector x here. Now let's compute the mean of x. Well there's a function for this called mean and typically those functions are have some input arguments like data or like um, some parameters that you need to set. Okay, let's compute the mean of x. It's 2. Now, how do we create matrices? Let's create a matrix A. Again, square brackets creates vectors, matrices, arrays, whatever. Um, and let's do the first row. The second row, we separate this with a semicolon. Let's do h21 and 222. Two, two. Okay, let's not suppress the output of the A matrix and we will see this creates this matrix here. If you want to, you can also write this one after one row after the other. Um, this is equivalent. This creates you the same matrix A. Okay, semicolon, suppress the output and simply use display A for, for instance. Okay, let's run the whole script and there you go. Okay, so what if we cur computed now the mean of A? Okay, so this is a matrix, matrix A, and basically what we did here, we computed the mean of 1, 8, and 2, of 2, 2, 2, and 3, 1, 2. So basically given the first dimension. Okay, so the mean actually has several different input arguments. For instance, do you want to compute the mean given a certain dimension and by default it is the dimension 1. Of course we could also compute um, dimension given dimension 2 then it would compute over the columns. Or we can also do all and this would then compute the mean of all the numbers. So you can do all sorts of computations with MATLAB. You can do a times x Well, actually you can't because the dimensions don't fit. Why? Have a look at, you get an error. Have a look at the size of A. It's 3 by 3. Have a look at the size of X. It's 1 by 3. Okay, so I could actually compute rather X transpose. This I can do. Okay, the transpose is either the just semicolon or you can also write it out as transpose x and you see that we can compute this now. Now what about other functions that we typically want to use? Maybe I want to take the square. Let's see what happens. A square, well it's a 3 by 3 matrix times a 3 by 3 matrix this works. But what if I want to do uh, the square of each number inside the matrix and MATLAB is able to do stuff element-wise, taking each element in a, a and then taking the square. Now, for codes, it is always important to comment, okay? And the person sign is the comment sign in MATLAB, okay? Uh, here you can write anything. So now we want to solve systems of linear equations, all right? A times X equals B, for instance. So let's create an A matrix, let's create a B matrix. I want to have the numbers 1, 2 and 3. There's a shortcut for this with, a, uh, with just a column. And this will get me a, let's have a look, 1, 2 and 3. This will get me a row vector, I want a column vector. There you go. Okay, now I want to compute X, so I need to, to left divide do a matrix left divide. And there is a command for this. So x is equals matrix left divide a and b. And there you go. This will give you the result right here. There's actually a short version of this x equals a left divide b. And it gives you the same number. 
Now let's compute eigenvalues. Okay, so eigenvalues of A, there is a function for this. Okay, those are the eigenvalues. What about the eigenvectors? So this function probably should also give you the eigenvectors. And you can have a look, very importantly, at the help of any function. So let's have a look here. And this gives you a brief description of what this function does, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and how it is called. And very important, there are always examples. So I really like to directly go into the example. So if I call it like this, this returns the diagonal matrix D of eigenvalues and the matrix V, whose columns are the corresponding eigenvectors. Okay, let's go into the example. Okay, I have some matrix A here, and then I call it like this. Let me simply copy this over. And let's see. Oh yeah, cool. And note that we created in our workspace now a new variable V and a new variable D. Okay, so those are stored. So this is a very important. Functions built in or functions that we will write ourselves have input arguments, right? There might be just one or there might be several. Um, there might be stuff that you can change. By default, there are some values. And functions can have more than one output. So what are common linear algebra functions that we are going to use? Maybe I want to also compute the inverse of A. Okay, and the inverse of A times B should actually also give me X. I get the same X here as here. Um, the underlying algorithm, if you have a look at the help of the mat left divide, for instance, it will actually also tell you which underlying algorithm it uses. Okay, so this is really already going into the details, but just um, for quick reference, this is usually faster than simply computing the inverse. If you really need the inverse of a matrix, you pro should probably use the in function. If you just care about the result of this system of linear equation, then you should use the left divide. Okay, we can also compute the rank of A um, or the diagonal elements of A, lowercase a, let's see. There is an error. We did not define any variable, lowercase variable a. Of course, MATLAB is case sensitive, okay? And this will give me the diagonal elements of a. Now, MATLAB is perfectly suited to uh, work with numbers, and you can d uh, have a look at certain um, types of n numbers, like integers or doubles or um, certain types of integers, certain types of um, doubles, etc. But MATLAB can also handle text, and this is what we then call string. So let's come do a string, hello world, for instance. And this is just text, and you can either you you can you use those semicolons to write down text, and let's display the text, run this, and you can see it outputted hello world. So um, MATLAB provides both very basic but also very sophisticated functions for all sorts of numerical computations. But it can also do very sophisticated things with data um, analysis, uh, plotting. Uh, you can even create your own apps and distribute them um, and share with, uh, with people. Now, in this course, we will uh, make use of many built-in functions um, to solve problems such as solving systems of linear uh, equations, solving nonlinear equations and several unknowns. Uh, we will go into approximate functions, we will compute derivatives and integrals, uh, we will do numerical optimization, find optima, etc. And basically this is all in already included in the core MATLAB uh, functionality. And um, however there are also additional so-called toolboxes that you can get. Um, they will give you even more functionality. And you do get those under um, hope, uh, sorry, under home add-ons. And then 
there is an add-on explorer where you can see that there are all sorts of additional toolboxes grouped under different applications, etc. So what we will need in this course is on one hand the econometrics toolbox and the statistics and machine learning toolbox because this gives you many functions to deal with random number generating to to deal with distributions etc um, we will also use the optimization and the global optimization toolbox this gives you different algorithms to find a minimum or a maximum uh, given constraints uh, etc in very highly nonlinear and highly complex cases um, and we will also need the symbolic math toolbox because we need to pre-process our DSG models uh, analytically and then write them out, uh, those Jacobians, uh, etc., write them out to functions. Now, the last toolbox that you probably want to install is also the parallel computing toolbox because we will also see that several tasks can be done in parallel. You have a uh, very beefy machine uh, that you can that has many cores that you can use to run tasks in parallel. All right, so we have seen how to use the help. Okay, so there is also a big button here where you can have a look at the documentation, certain examples. MATLAB has a very very good uh, help explorer. It um, provides you information on the algorithms you use on uh, frameworks that are required. Um, but honestly, uh, or quite frankly, when I um, I am looking for a function, of course, I can. There is this look for command that say singular value decomposition, and it will list you all sorts of functions that you might be useful. But honestly, I simply run an internet search, singular value decomposition MATLAB, and most of the times I get into the MATLAB forum and it's very great to and people share their codes and help you out all right now matlab um, as i was saying is a so-called matrix oriented environment and programming language it works best with objects that you know from linear algebra that is uh, scalars vectors matrices or more general multi-dimensional matrices so-called arrays um, you can create those objects with square brackets as we've seen here um, and then there are also some functions that will quickly create you those objects, those arrays. So for instance, let's have a look at the zeros function. Okay, let's have a look at the help. You can simply hit F1, which gives you the help. And this creates an array of all zeros. And you can either have one input. This returns an n by n matrix of zeros or several inputs this will then return you an array of zeros so let's create matrix x call zeros it should have three rows and two columns let's create a matrix y with a different function very similar and it should have three rows, two columns, and let's also include a third dimension and dimension of this third dimension, let's put this to four. And lastly, uh, a matrix Z with NAN, which stands for not a number, which will have three, two, four, and five. Okay, now let's see what happens. You can see in the workspace that those matrices were created. Okay, so for, let's have a look first at X, only zeros at Y. All right, so MATLAB displays all the rows and all the columns for the second page, for the first page, etc. And what about Z? Let's have a look at Z. Okay, so all the rows, all the columns, the third dimension when it's three, when it is five, so you can have a look what is in this array. Now, zeros, ones, and NANs, we will use this all the time to initialize variables, okay? Afterwards, we will fill the entries with something else. So, for instance, if we want to change the second, 
row and the first column of x and put in a 5 in there. Let's do this and let's have a look at x. You can see that we changed this entry here. However, you can also change, for instance, the fifth value. Let's put in a 2. Okay, and let's see what happened. What is the fifth value? Well, MATLAB counts column-wise. Okay, so this is the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth entry. So you can ac access elements using round brackets, either selecting the exact dimension or using this um, counting of, uh, of elements um, column-wise. There are also some other shortcuts here. Maybe I want to have all the rows and then I will put a semicolon and only the second column. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so this selects me all the rows and only the second column. Or I want to have the last row or the second to last row and the first column. Okay, let's see, this will give me my 5. Let's see, this is exactly the 5. Okay, last one, minus 1, first column, this is the entry. Now, the empty vector, okay? So this is the empty vector. This empty vector has different usages. One is to get rid of objects. For instance, I want to get rid of the second column of x. I'm only left with the first column. Very importantly, this is a this is destructive, right? So x was previously a matrix, now I've removed the second column, now this is a vector. Okay, and this is overriding the x. Now those are all built-in functions. But MATLAB is capable or enables us to write our own functions. So let's open up a new script file and let's write a function. Okay, so there's a keyword to tell MATLAB this is now a function. And this function has several output arguments. Call them ABC. What is the name of your function? My function. And what are the input arguments? Let's say X and Y. And at the end, this is the function end here. Actually, you don't really need this, but you can have function inside functions, then you will need the end here. But uh, I think it is better practice to keep the end. Now, in the body of the function, we need to tell MATLAB how to get the output arguments. Okay, so let's say, for instance, a is the exponential of 2 times x, element-wise, multiply with the sine of y. And b is the other way around, 2 times y sine x and I don't know, c is a plus b. There you go. Okay, now we need to save the function. So hit editor and save. And it will automatically propose to name it what you named the function here. Very importantly, the ending for MATLAB, for a MATLAB function needs to be dot m. Okay, let's say save this. Now let's go back to our script. So let's create x, 1, 2, 4, and y, 2, 2, 8, but I want to inc have increments of 2. Okay, let's have a look. Run this code, and you have 1, 2, 3, 4, and your y is 2, 4, 6, 8. And now let's call my function on x and y. And this outputs me, well, what does it output? only the first entry here, only the first output argument, the A. So if I want to have all, let's call this out1, comma, out2, and out3. Let's run this again. And now I can have a look at out1, out2, and out3. So this tells me that those are huge numbers. Okay, so this is 10 to the power of 6. All right. 
Now, this is how we write functions. And we will do this all the time. So, another thing that we might want to do is how to plot stuff. Okay, now, how to plot stuff. Let's um, write, create an x with increments of 0 0.1 to 2 times pi. Okay, pi is the built-in number. And the plot command is very easy. You have whatever is your x variable, whatever is your y variable. Let's compute the sine of x. Okay, let's do these two commands first. And you see the sine curve. And we can change all the properties of the of the plot. We can change the colors, the thickness, the colors of the frame, the axis, etc. Um, either by calling different um, properties of the plot command or by calling other functions. For instance, the axis command, if I call this, changes the axis from the y-axis from minus 1 to 1 and the x-axis from 0 to 2 times pi. Again, the plot command is extremely powerful and we will uh, whenever we need it, I will talk about the plot command a bit more in detail. Now, for us, more importantly, is actually what we need for programming. How do we do? How do we check conditions? How do we do control sequences, etc.? So, and this is quite straightforward. Let's say we put in a number. Let's do whatever. Um, well, let's actually have the user input something. Okay, input, enter, and integer. And then, if this integer is an even number, we can check this by looking at the mod function. Let's have a look at the help file. This is the remainder after division. Okay, returns the remainder after division of a. So let's do remainder after division of my number with 2. Okay, if that is 0, double equal sign, compare it to 0, then let's display even number. Else if the division of my number with 2 is equal to 1, then display this is an odd number. In all other cases, something's wrong. Let's do an error, okay? Maybe number is not an integer. And end. Okay, so the if statement begins with an if, ends with an end. And sometimes you also have maybe an else if this happens or in all other cases, but those are optional. Okay, so very importantly, if this condition is already fulfilled, uh, we won't, we will never execute the lower ones. Okay, let's see. Let's run this code and let's see what happens here. Let's clear it first. Now, enter an integer, five it is an odd number. Let's rerun this, six it is an even number and 3.3 .3 is not an integer and we throw out an error. We can also just throw out a warning if we want to. 5.2 warning. So there is a bit of a difference. An error will always stop the code. A warning will simply display you a warning in a different color but it will continue with the code. Now what about control structures that you will find in many programming languages like loops. Okay, so what about loops? Let's do this. Let's, for instance, create a variable. Let's initialize this variable. It has 100 entries. So let's create, simply fill them with NAN, not a number. And let's do something for a counter. Let's call this J. And this should, this variable should go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to a hundred. So I could either write a hundred here or I can have a look at the size of Z, the first one. Okay, so the number of rows. A for loop has to end with an end and then let's fill in the body. Let's 
do something, compute something. Um, for instance, let's compute or let's get a hundred, sorry, a hundred randomly normally distributed variables. Quickly check what this command does. Gives you a vector of hundred standard normally distributed variables and let's compute the mean of that. Okay, so in the first run we will get this. Let's keep running this and I want to do this a hundred times. And I want to store this mean in this variable z. So let's store it. I do access elements of z with those um, parentheses and at which position. Let's do this in position in row j and column 1. And let's not display there. Let's evaluate this. Okay, now we have filled z. There is no NAN. Very good. So everything went smoothly. There was no error. Nothing. Uh, we can even check that maybe. Okay, so if is NAN, then throw an error. Something's wrong. Okay, what does this is NAN function do? Let's see. It checks whether there is an NAN, and if there is an NAN at any position, all right, it will give you a one. So actually, this if statement would be if any. Okay, I have now a hundred zeros. If any one of those is one, then this condition becomes a logical true, a Boolean true, and then I'm going to write this. So in a sense, let's initialize the z variable again. And let's not do the loop here. And let's check if is NAN z. Yeah, all of them. What about any? Of course, all of them. So this will then throw you an error. Okay. And now uh, let's have a look at um, the, for instance, the histogram of z. There you go. There you get a histogram. Okay, so there are some commands that will plot you certain aspects. And I mean, you can see that we would expect this to be zero. So let's increase the number maybe. Let's call this number r. And let's redo this computations. And you can see that of course, the mean is standard, normally distributed. Maybe do even more replications. A million or 10 millions. Uh, let's have a look. And sometimes computations simply take time. All right, even more computations. So you can see below here, busy. And if you did something wrong or the computer doesn't react and, and you're sure, all right, this will never stop, you can always do control C. Control C will end the current running um, commands. Okay, so we stopped at iteration, at this number of iterations. Control C, very important. If you see a busy and you know something got stuck because maybe you didn't get the right cur uh, conditioning correct, etc., you can always simply stop. All right, so much for a very quick tour in MATLAB. Go through the preferences, uh, think about a layout that you like here, and then go through the exercises. Bye!